Today is Pentecost Sunday, and I'm going to start with just a few words about what Pentecost is. Pentecost was the, the, day, was the day the disciples received the Holy Spirit in a special way. The story in Acts describes a powerful wind and tongues of fire as the Holy Spirit was poured out on people from all over the world who came to Jerusalem to celebrate a Jewish feast. At the first Pentecost, over 3,000 people were baptized, creating the first church. This is why Pentecost is known as the birthday of the Christian church. Prayer requests for this week um, that I'll share uh, with you. Um, prayers for the family of Fran Flavlin from Stacy, who passed away on May 19th. Fran was a longtime member and supporter of our church. The gathering will be held on this Thursday, May 27, from 11 to 1 p.m. at Madsen Funeral Home, with burial in the Stacy Cemetery immediately following the gathering at Madsen. Lois asks for prayers for a young, one-year married lady by the name of Jessica. She has a six-week-old baby named Charlotte. Uh, Jessica was diagnosed with an advanced stage of cancer and is now undergoing treatment. And she had to wait for the birth of the baby before she could start the treatment. So please keep Jessica and baby Charlotte in your prayers. And then Colleen Hall has a request. request. Many of you probably know her mom, Ursula, who turned 99 a week, week and a half ago. And she had two stents put in uh, within the last week. And she's now in transitional care at, oops, at Harmony in Chisaga Lakes. And hopefully we will be home within a week. Yeah, no. Just kind of amazing what a 99-year-old can still go through. So let us all enjoy. Mm -hmm. Oops, excuse me.
I'm glad that you're here this morning. But I have a, a story to tell you that I read in the upper room some time ago and I torn out a page and um, it's about a little bird. You see my little bird? A little boy and his mom were visiting their grandma when suddenly he came rushing in the house and he said, come quick, a little bird is falling out of the nest. And so they went outside to see, and sure enough, there on the ground was a little, little tiny bird, probably smaller than this one, but this um, He wondered what to do. The nest was empty. He said, look, there's no mama bird around. The nest is empty. And suddenly, just like that, the mom ran to the garage, and she found a box and a blanket in it. But meanwhile, grandma just felt a nudge. And she said, there's a verse in the Bible that says, not even a sparrow falls to the ground without God watching over it. And she felt that. She just instantly said, wait. And they stopped what they were doing and stood there and watched that little bird. And pretty soon, he just started hopping a little bit about the ground, across the ground. And then, all of a sudden, he took off and he flew across the road. And no knowing that God was caring for him, that they did not have to help him, that God loves the little birds and cares for them, just as he loves each one of you and cares for you. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for caring for us and for caring the little birds and the other creatures just as much as you love and care for each one of us. Amen. And now I think you can go with Jane. <laughs> Won't that be fun? Genesis chapter 1. 
heavens and the earth. All you see, all you don't see. Earth was a soup of nothingness, a bottomless emptiness, an inky blackness. God's spirit brooded like a bird above the watery abyss. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And God separated the light from the darkness. God named the day like the day light day and the night dark. And the dark night part. It was evening, it was morning, day one. And ever room writer writes, while walking to an evening worship service, I saw the soft warm light from the sanctuary came out of windows, glowing in the night. The windows provided a welcome but limited illumination to my surroundings. It occurred to me that this outward bound light pales in comparison to what we experience during daytime services, when the sunlight pours through the windows and fills the church with brilliant color and warmth. So look around you and see our stained glass windows and think of what she saw and the light that we get during the daytime. They came from the old church when we decided to build this new church and the new sanctuary. And to many of us, they bring back lots of memories of those who have gone before us. Most of them were done in memory of people uh, that had lived in the past before us that were followers and members of our church. The sunlight is the light that God gives to us, how vital and powerful both are in our lives. Just as the brightness of daylight far outshines the light that comes from the church windows at night, God's light is infinitely more powerful than what we humans can produce. Yet this humbling comparison can encourage us to continue with our outreach efforts so that God's light can shine through each one of us, illuminating the loving message of God for people everywhere. Isaiah reads, I will lead the blind by ways they have not known. Along unfamiliar paths I will guide them. I will turn the darkness into light before them and make the rough places smooth. These are the things I will do. I will not forsake them. God's light will lead us through any challenges we may face. Glimpses of God's light, even on the darkest days, can bring light to us, light at the end of the tunnel. And in Luke, we read, there were shepherds. God's glory blazed around them. At once, the angels were joined by a heavenly choir. God's light shined all around them, and they hurried off to see. He left, running to Bethlehem, to see for themselves what God had revealed to them and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about the child. And then later in the Gospel, we read about the Magi, the wise men who followed the light of a star, a star they'd seen in the distance that was so bright, and they were curious where it was going to lead them. And they followed it until they came to the place where the light showed over the manger where the Christ child was. Once again, light was leading God's people, as it continues to lead each one of us today. The beauty of the sunrise is welcoming us to each new day, and the blessing of the sunset, and the gift of rest after another day, blessed by our Heavenly Father. First John says, God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. Are we, as Christians, letting our light shine for the world to see? Or are we, like the kids song goes, Hiding it under a bushel? Matthew reminds us, you are the light of the world, and are proud to let your light shine so that others can see Jesus in you. Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. I love lighthouses. Um, the light, the, the guidance, the beauty of them, and a few years back, I went with Myron to Newfoundland, across northern Canada, um, to go moose and caribou hunting. He was hunting, I went tramping up and down the hills and through the swamps and over the puddles with him. Um, the hunts were successful, but part of it was when we travel, typically we get in the car and we don't stop until we arrive at our destination. And I said, I'll go with you as long as we do some sightseeing and we see something besides the road for, and the signs of the road we're going by. So we made side trips on the way out, a couple of them on the way back, and saw the beauty of God's creation in another part of our world, places we hadn't 
been before. And then a year ago last fall, our daughter Deb and I um, flew out to Acadia National Park in eastern Maine and once again found lighthouses along the ocean and took pictures and came back with more pictures. That's tons of pictures of lighthouses. Um, so I'd like to and first Foot um, Rock Lighthouse is the Minnesota lighthouse that I guess most or all of you have at some time gone north of Duluth and saw Foot Rock, maybe visited it, stopped and looked, at least see it as you go by. And so um, I delved into some more information about Foot Rock Lighthouse and the history of lighthouses that I'd like to share. Split Rock was constructed in 1909 and 1910 after storms led to 116 deaths and the destruction of many vessels. Construction was difficult because of the remote location required for all building materials had to become by ship or by boat. Only being accessible by water in the first years of operation, the keepers and assistants lived a relatively isolated life requiring around-the-clock operation and maintenance. In 1924, North Shore Scenic Highway opened and enabled a new era of lighthouse tourism. Foot Rock remained open until in an operation until 1969 when it was decommissioned and closed as navigational equipment and radar had now made its light and fog signals obsolete. You could at one time even climb up into and you don't know if you can anymore. Um, and look over and visualize and think of the ships being guided to safety. Today, with modern technology, lighthouses have become points of interest, and thankfully, many have been restored to their original beauty. A bit more history. A lighthouse is a tower with a bright light on the top. The earliest forms of lighthouses were probably bonfires on the beach. The earliest known lighthouse was built in Egypt over 2,000 years ago. Lighthouses symbolize safety, strength, individuality, and even death. They represent hope and safe havens. When a sh ship first sees the glimmering light atop a lighthouse in the distance, they aid in navigation, warn of hazards, guide maritime vessels to their destinations and to safety with lights and patterns and radiance. Jesus is a lighthouse for us on our journey through life. He aids us on our journey. He warn or alert us of dangers ahead, guiding us on our daily paths. He helps us navigate in the dark and sometimes dangerous paths we may face in our daily lives. And it brings us to a place of safety. When we follow Jesus, our Savior and guide, we walk in His way. When days seem dark and dreary, in the heart of safety, let Jesus be your lighthouse, your way to peace and calm and safe waters. And back to Genesis, then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. For blessed are your eyes because they see, and your ears because they hear. When we take Jesus at his word and submerge ourselves in his grace, our eyes are focused renewed and filled with the light of who he is. We are filled with a new sense of clarity about what is important and the hope of what Jesus can do in our lives when we see things the way he does. Isaiah says, lift up your eyes and look to the heavens. Who created all these? He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls forth each of them by name. Because of his great power and mighty strength, not one of them is missing. The spectacle of creation on those nights can lead us to cry out with the psalmist, O Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For the light in the night skies touches us, reminds us of the beauty of creation, the awesome power and glory of our creator God. Open your eyes and see the light of his glory. Stand in reverence, in awe, in wonder, and be filled with the light of Christ. And as I see the sun rises most mornings and often um, the sun sets. I can't help but stand in awe of our Creator God and all He has given, given us. Psalm 30 reads, "Weeping may tarry for the morning, but joy com for the night, but joy cometh in the morning." Have you ever had a dark night of the soul? We all have, haven't we? A day, a week, 
even longer. There's no shortage of darkness in this world. Just watch the evening news and your heart breaks for so many as we yearn for peace and, and calmness and joy to come back into our neighborhoods, our state, our country, our world. Jesus gives us the promise of light that overcomes the darkness, for he is the morning star, and we can trust him to bring us joy and light and hope, for joy does come in the morning. Matthew 5 says, Let your light shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. People often crave light to help illuminate the mess they're in and send the darkness fleeing. Jesus is that light. We can be his reflection as we share our words, just love. As we share our words, our love, our notes and calls with those to whom we may be, ex whom may be experiencing darkness at this moment in time, you each can make a difference. One writer put it this way, let your light shine brightly today and before day's end, make sure someone who needs hope sees it in and hears it from you. A call or a note to someone that you know it would bring brightness into their life that is struggling. And now back to Genesis. Once light was in the world, God proceeded to put the world in order. The sun, the stars, the days, the nights. Creation without light would be incomplete. So the light of the world spoke light into our world. God spoke, let there be light. And a baby was born who would be the light of the world. And human history was changed forever. And God created us to have light as well. And God's light shines through his people living in the world, through each of us as we follow him. We are called to be the light of the world and to share that light with others. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And in closing, this from the fifth chapter of Matthew, here's another way to put it. You're here to be light, bringing out the God colors in the world. God is not a secret to be, to be kept. We're going public with this, as public as a city on a hill. If I make you light bearers, you don't think I'm going to hide you under a bushel, do you? I'm putting you on a nightstand. Now that I have put you there, on a hilltop, on a nightstand, shine. Keep open house. Be generous with your lives. By opening up to others, you'll prompt people to open up with God, our generous Father in heaven. And Douglas Wood, from his book, Old Turtle, closes with these words. After a long, lonesome, and scary time, the people listened and began to hear and to see God in one another and in the beauty of all the earth. Yes, let your light shine. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your light that shines to show us the way, to guide us when the way seems filled with darkness, to fill our hearts and minds with your light and your presence. Thank you for the beauty of the sunrise and the sunsets that remind us daily of your creation and your love for us. For it is in your holy name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. And now, um, turn to 206, if you'd like, in your hymnals, or the words are on the screen. I want to walk as a child of light.
We pretty much covered the announcements earlier before prayer time. There are several articles that have been in the bulletin week after week. If you want to be sure and take your bulletin and look at them, um, some looking for some graduates so we don't miss them all. And there's some stepping stones if you have children or grandchildren that made them out by the shed and back. And uh, thank you all for worshiping with us. So go now in peace and let your light shine. Amen. <laughs>